The first six months of the uh, website's lifetime is a very difficult time. You have to choose a niche, you have to do keyword research, and you have to write articles, and you don't get any feedback if what you're doing is right or not. And that is one of the reasons why I do a case study here on the channel. And for this video, I've collected the whole first six months of my case study videos. There's seven videos in all because there was a, a month zero before we started. And I will pop in between the, the segments to, to give my thoughts now when the six months has passed. The first one was a video on uh, how to select your niche and what is called a value added decision matrix that can uh, help you um, be a bit clearer on the decisions you have to make when you're choosing a niche. When it, it comes down to it, you, you still have to make a gut decision but getting the facts out will help you in that process. So that was month zero. If you're like me, you would want to know how to be successful before you start a project. But when you don't have any real experience, you don't have a real good sense of what that means and what it takes. But delaying the decision and doing more research is not going to help you, not in the long run. At some point, you would have to make a decision to move forward. Luckily, there is a method that will increase your chances of making the right decision. In the end, it's still a gut feeling decision, but this method is going to increase the chances of you making the right decision. It's called the weighted average decision matrix. And stick around because I'm going to give you a couple of extra free niche website ideas. In my video from a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to find niche website ideas on my local library. I'm going to fill them in in the computer in a second and I'm going to add in some of the some of my own ideas and after that I'm going to show you Emilia Gardner's idea on how to get niche website ideas and that idea is quite brilliant, but let me show you. In my spreadsheet here, I'm going to add five areas that I think are important for niche, sel niche, sele niche selection. I think these five areas are very important. In my experience, you can add more if you like, but getting more than six or seven is too much, I think. So the first one is easy topic ideas, and that is on a scale from one to five. How easy is it to find ideas to write articles about. Ne the next one is low competition. That is also on a scale for, from one to five. How easy do I think the competition is to beat? The next one is how easy it is to, to monetize. Then there's about something about community. And the last one is personal interest. One of the things we found in my earlier video was something called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Another thing was a specific area on gardening. We found something about not model trains, but model trams. Then something about touring bikes. And then something about vacation home management for uh, home owners. Art creator marketing. And the last one we found in that video from a couple of weeks back was fintech and cybersecurity. I promised you I was going to add in some of my own ideas. One of the uh, ideas I've, uh, that have been in my spreadsheet for a while is allergy free dogs. Here is something about using shipping containers for houses. This is actually an idea I got from the income school guys, but home DJing and home DJing and equipment. I promised you I was going to find some ideas that Emilia Gardner um, suggested, and her idea was to look up uh, conference, conferences in some of the major cities and. The first one I thought of was Miami, and looking into the um, to the list here, there's a ton of uh, great ideas. I just click on one of the top results here. I'm not quite sure what it is actually, but it, it's it's something about a uh, coach development for uh, fitness training. 
Fitness Coach Development for Women. I also looked up uh, Las Vegas and there was something that caught my attention here. It's a LED something summit. Um, and it actually seems to be a conference around uh, doing HR work and doing it with the metrics and frameworks and all sort of fine words I don't even know here. I'm going through the list here to get a sense of how easy it is to find topic ideas. So if I just Google the main term, I can see there's only two also ask and okay there is some some related searches we can also go to uber suggest and see what comes up keyword ideas okay so there's something here most of these keywords are ymyl so maybe it's not going to be as easy as i thought in the beginning so i'm going to give it a two out of five Garden cleaning and weed removal, I'm not going to look up because I know it's going to be easy to find ideas. I don't know yet how the competition is, but it's definitely going to be easy to find ideas. Model trams and sceneries, I don't know much about. If you want, you can look, up, look it up to see if I'm right. I'm going to put it in the middle because I, I'm guessing there, there will be a lot of uh, topic ideas, but I don't know too much about it. So in the beginning, it will be difficult for me to, uh, to find. And I'm going to do the same thing for competition. So the competition is um, YMYL areas, and that is hard to break into. So there's high competition here. So I'm going to give that a low number. Gardening is a very competitive niche, but as we saw in the earlier video, the specific, the specific area on cleaning and weed removal doesn't have too much competition. So I'm going to give that a higher number. Model train as well is a competitive niche, but going at it from the tramps perspective. For monetization, I would do one specific thing. I would go to Amazon and type in the keyword and not because I'm going to use um, Amazon affiliates per se, but I'm going to look if there is any products around this area. So there's a headband and it's it's a very good price actually because it's, it's not too high. So people will do uh, days of research before buying, but it's still high enough to earn a, a decent commission. And then there's some books, maybe an, a little more technical stuff and some supplements. So I know there's there's going to be products I can do affiliates, I can be affiliate for, even though I don't choose Amazon specifically, I, there will be some affiliate programs out there, there must be. And there's also going to be ads around some of these products. But maybe doing a course on it is going to be difficult. So I'm not going to give it a five, even though the product seems to, to be good and a very good price. I'm going to give it a four anyways, because I know there is going to be something about it. Gardening is definitely going to have a five. You can do pressure washers and you can uh, go and for smaller tools like shovels and everything else. Model tramps are definitely also a very product heavy niche uh, and you can do building courses and you can do ebooks and i can quite easily see how that can be monetized for the community aspect i know there's going to be some interest around this because most of these ideas came out of magazines. But finding a community around this specific treatment is maybe going to be a little more difficult. So this is not going to be a high number, but still something. A community around garden cleaning is maybe possible, but I don't see that people will go to conferences for this. So this is also going to be something in the middle. Model trains is definitely going to be a community rich area and people will travel uh, long distances to get to conferences. 
I will uh, just skip to this one because I know that this is not something that people will travel to conferences for, but there is a lot of Facebook communities around this. So yeah, I, I'm going to give this a high number and I'm going to fill in the rest of the list now. And then for the personal interest, this is just for you. I'm going to fill it in with numbers just for me. So this is just a decision matrix and that might be good enough if, just, if you just want a quick overview. But the weighted part comes in because some of these areas are not as important as others. So if you want early success, you would go for easy topics with a lower weight on monetization. If you want more monetization and you have some experience, you might go for a more competitive niche where it's more difficult to find a good topic ideas. And a quick favor before we go on, if you're finding any of this useful, please touch the like button. I'm going to add in a column now for a multiple. I'm going to add in a multiple for how important easy topic ideas are. So if you're a beginner, you would want this to have a greater multiple. I have some experience, so I'm going to give it a lower multiple, but it is still somewhat important that I can find at least 100, maybe 200 ideas. I'm going to use a multiple of three. This is going to be the same for everyone on the list here. For low competition, this is sort of the same thinking. If you're a beginner, you would put more emphasis on low competition than I would. It's still important, but I have some patience to wait maybe two years before this really takes off. If you want this to take off within the next six, eight, or maybe 10 months, you would go for lower competition. So, and then you would give it a high multiple. And let's say you would want that, you would uh, add uh, a multiple of five, say. For me, I have a, a bit more patience and low competition is uh, doesn't scare me as much. So I'm going to give it a lower multiple. And of course, I'm going to add the same thing for everything in the list. Monetization is important, of course, Again, if you're a beginner, this this might not be as important as it, as it is to me. If you want to practice your skill of blogging, you of course want to get some money out. But if it's, uh, let's say, 900 instead of $1,000 a month, this might not be too big of, of a difference. At, at least you're earning something and developing skills. I would rank community high as well, as I feel it's always important. So I'm going to give it a multiple of four. For personal interest, I would give this a high multiple if you're a beginner. You are going to burn out at some point. We all do in blogging. For me, I've been around a couple of times so I know how it feels and I know how to get past it so personal interest is not as important to me but if you're st starting out I would recommend that you give this a high multiple a four or a five I'm going to give it a three so now I'm going to add up everything here, but I'm not going to add the number I gave it. I'm going to add up the multiple. So I'm going to take this plus this plus this plus this plus this one. And it gives me the value added score. And the same goes for everything down the list. And now we can have a look to see what topic scored the most. So this decision matrix chose the allergy-free dogs thing. Touring bikes and gardening came high as well. Which one would you choose? 
this is going to be a case study going forward. So you can follow along and see how successful this decision matrix really is. It's a part of a project called Project Icarus. Emilia Gardner has more on that on her channel. It's her project and, and she started a, a community around that. And this is my take on how to start and build a website. And you can follow along in this series. I'm also going to use this table here. I'm going to fill in the data as we go along and I'm going to share all my re revenue numbers and page views and all that fun stuff. Take care. See you next time. Going forward, you will probably be able to guess what niche I selected. For the next video, I was focusing on keyword research. There's a ton of videos out there and you can go and look as, at as many as you like. I've been using the KDR method for some time and I wanted to uh, take a closer look to see if that uh, strategy has actually proven to, to produce any meaningful results. So for the, the next video, I decided to go back and look at some of my older content and evaluate whether the KDR was a good uh, strategy to, to use moving forward. Going back and looking at old data in uh, and finding data in something that has already happened is not a very high scientific uh, way to approach data, but that is what I had and I have designed a new study um, to, to look at this in more details going forward. For the next segment, I am going to evaluate whether the KDR method is good for me or not. Method. I'm going to assume that you already know what the KDR is. As I'm doing research for this project Icarus that Emilia Gardner has started, I'm going to look back at some of my older research to find the best way to do uh, keyword research moving forward. And KDR is one of the methods I've been using for a while. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a veterinarian from Denmark and I spent a couple of years in university to learn scientific methods. And one of the things that irritates me about uh, a lot of videos on here on YouTube is that it's, it's, uh, it seems to be data, but they are cherry picking and you can make data show anything you like. And that's why there is scientific methods for evaluating data. So you get your feelings and your own opinions out of the way. And for that, we are going to be a bit sciencey and I'm, I'm going to, to need my lab coat. Just a second. When we have a test, it can either come out as positive or negative. Positive meaning that the test has picked out a certain thing. In this case, it's the KDR picking out the right keywords. As another random example, it could be a nasal swab for a virus with pandemic potential. When you're doing a nasal swab, it can come out positive, meaning that you have the virus, and it can come out negative, meaning that you don't have. Or that is the, the optimal way because there's actually two other instances um, and we are going to look at that. And for that, we are going to use a, what is called a two by two matrix. The test can either come out as positive or negative, but every test is going to have what is called a false positive. So it's going, some tests, most tests are going to uh, give a positive test result in cases where they wasn't supposed to. So in this case, it's the KDR picking out a keyword, telling you it's a good keyword to write a topic on, to write an article on, when in fact it's not. And in the other example, it's a nasal swap telling you that you have a virus when you actually don't. So this is what is called a false positive. In this case, we're going to use a keyword here. So the test picks out, the KDR test picks out that this is a good keyword, but in fact, it's not a good, good keyword. So I'm going to give it a minus in the, the keyword here. This is called a false positive. 
Of course, you can, ha you can have a true positive as well. And that is what we are going for, of course. The opposite can also happen. So the test comes out with a negative, meaning that this is not a good keyword to write on or you don't have the disease, but in fact, it was a good keyword to write on or in fact, you did actually have the disease, but the test didn't pick it out. So this is going to be a false, can anyone guess it? Negative. And in this case where the test says uh, the disease is not there or the keyword is not there, it's going to be a true negative. So the optimal test will always pick out a good keyword when it's there. And it will always be negative when it's not a good keyword. Of course, the world is not optimal and no test is ever 100% but we want these two values to be as high as possible. And we want as few false positive and a few, as few false negatives as possible. And I'm going to fill in some real life data from one of my websites now. What I have here is the 10 best articles from one of my websites. And to be clear, this is not the website I'm doing a case study on in this video. This is an older site I have and these articles are at least one year old. And these 10 articles are the ones that get the most traffic. So I'm going back and evaluating the key GR for all 10 of the best posts here. And of course I'm doing as uh, you're supposed to, the all entitled search. And then I find the search volume. And as you can see, there's a couple of articles that actually have zero search volume. That's <laughs> uh, approximately half of them has zero volume, but they're still uh, amongst the articles that get the most search traffic. And that of course gives a, an error in the KDR because you cannot divide by zero. Then I go back and find 10 articles that I originally found with the KGR method. Back in about a year ago, they were all, they, they had all a decent KGR ratio. Doing this now, it seems that that have somewhat changed. So um, other, there might be some, some AI bots artist articles in the search results now. For the purpose of this video, I will only evaluate the articles that still are getting a good KDR just to be fair to the method. The estimated search traffic has also changed. So what we find here is that actually about only about half of these articles that originally was a good KDR um, is is not anymore and now i add in a column for rank and i take the rankings i use manage wp and then i add a column for page views within the last 30 days just to add the data as well so this is of course going to be used to evaluate if a keyword was going was a good idea to write an article on. One thing I quickly notice in the top 10 is that the four articles that rank the lowest 7, 8, 6 and 7 all have an high KTR. I'm going to touch upon that just in just in a second, but that is one thing I notice in the data here. And from this, we are going to calculate what is called a negative predictive value and a positive predictive value. And that means how likely the test is actually to predict if the patient is positive or if the, in this case, the KTR is picking out the right keyword. And negative predictive value is going to tell us how likely the test is to pick out keywords that we don't want to write about we have three that the KTR test has picked out as good keywords, and we have 18 that the KTR test has picked out as not so good keywords. And 
this makes more than 20 I know and it's because there's one article in there that ranks for two keywords so that that's why it's, it, it's 21. Of the three good keywords actually zero of them have has proven to actually be a good keyword and that makes of course three to be a not so good keyword. Out of the 18 the test has shown us is not a good keyword actually six of those has shown to be somewhat good and, and monthly traffic with about 300 isn't great but it's it's better than nothing right and that leaves us to the what is called the true negatives to be 12. And now we can add this into the online calculator. There's a link in the description for that calculator. I go to this diagnostic test evaluation calculator and we're going to add in the, our numbers. So this is similar to our two by two matrix. True positives were zero, false negatives were three, true positives were six and true negatives was 12. We hit test and we get our test results here. So we are looking for the positive predictive value and the negative predictive value. Positive predictive value tells us how likely it is that a test will pick out something when it's supposed to, in this case, keywords. And in my data set, there's zero percent chance that the KTR test will pick out a good keyword. That is also shown in the sensitivity, meaning how sensitive the test is for finding a certain thing, and there's zero percent chance. On the other hand, negative predictive value tells me how likely it is that the test will pick out something that I shouldn't care about. In this case, how likely the KDR test is to pick out keywords that I should not write articles on. And this number is way better, it's actually 80% likely. So this tells me that I can use the KDR test for choosing topics I should not write about but it is not good for finding topics I should write about, according to my data set anyway. Another thing we could look at is the CI, and it's, it stands for confidence interval, and it's, it shows us how confident that we are in the test results that we got. And the 0% actually, uh, the real value would be between zero and 70, and that is a huge gap here. So it, it, it tells me that the data set uh, was too small to, to make a, a precise prediction. So the true value would, could be higher within this range. But when we look at the negative predictive value, we can see that the range is very smaller. And that tells me that the data set is more confident that this is the correct value. Another thing we could look at is how accurate the test is from this data set. And it's just above, above 50%, just a little bit better than a coin flip. But this data shows that we can actually use the KDR method to predict keywords that we should not write about. More than it can predict keywords that we should write about. And as a true scientist, I have to point out places in my own data that might be faulty. And you can actually come at this data from multiple angles. And that is why I'm going to do a new study on this as well. But I have chosen um, articles that don't give a correct KGR number. And that's also sort of the point. If the keyword has zero search volume in the tools, it's not going to work because you cannot divide by zero. And the KDR method cannot pick out keywords with zero volume. And some of the uh, good articles here have zero, zero volume. But I included in them in this data set anyways. And you can argue that this isn't the, the, right, the right way of using the KDR method. But that's actually sort of one of my points as well, because you are going to miss some of the articles that you would want to write. Uh, and that is actually what the data shows here. 
Another thing you can point out here is that I only used one tool to find the search volume. And if you look across four or five different tools, you would get different estimates on search volume. And depending on what tool I choose to use, I will get different results. So that might be something to include in a future study is uh, doing the KGR method for like five different tools. And that could be interesting in a scientific way, but if you're doing keyword research and you just want to find 50 good articles to start a website on, you might not want to spend that much time finding all that numbers in different tools. Uh, it, it might be a rabbit hole that distracts you from actually doing the work. So if we want to be more scientific in this approach, I would have to design a study where I choose, let's say, 10 different keywords uh, that is found with the KDR method and 10 different keywords that are found with another method. method. And I have to prove, uh, I have to show you within like six or eight months that there is a significant difference in these two groups. Just picking out data from an old data set to, to find what I'm going to, to prove here uh, might also not be the, the best scientific approach. I've tried to, to do it as best as possible with the data I have, but I am going to do this more blind tested uh, scientific approach. And this is a case study video for the project Icarus. And even though it's fairly, it's a fairly new website, we are going to, uh, to dive into the numbers for traffic and earnings. I know this is somewhat ridiculous, but bear me, with me. This is a case study video. So I've published one article on the website. And if you go back, you can probably guess what niche I'm in. This, the main domain is indexed but the article isn't so it's got zero page views and of course zero earnings as i said and as i've talked about here on the channel going back and looking at old data trying to find commonalities in them is not a uh, a good scientific approach. I have designed a study that is actually running in this case study right now, where I have used different keyword research methods. And right now we are waiting to see uh, which articles rank and which will draw in some traffic. And maybe around at the end of the year, the data will be ready uh, and we can sort of evaluate these processes and these strategies in, in more detail. This case study is running together with a lot of other people uh, and we have a community over at Emilia Gartner's channel and some in this community are using their case studies to evaluate aged domains and they have sponsored aged domains from otis.global and looking back now it seems like to be a, a, a good strategy for some of them. I have some failures with eight domains in the past. And that is what I will be talking about in the next segment. Time for a case study video update and we have traffic. More on that later. I'm not using an H domain as others in this case study series, Project Icarus. I'm starting on a brand new domain, domain and I have a very specific reason for that I'm going to show you on the computer. I have two failed projects in my past, I'm going to share all the ugly details with you. Project Icarus is something Emilia Gardner has started over on her channel and you can go there to get all the background. It's a case study where she starts an age domain in hopes of skipping the sandbox period. And some of us have uh, chimed in and are starting our own website. And as I said, I've chosen to start on a brand new domain. The reason being that I've failed twice at this and I don't really believe there is a sandbox period and I'm going to touch more on that later. I really do believe that you can learn more from your failures than from your successes. And if you look at too many videos here on YouTube on how successful people can be on, in online business, you don't really get the full picture. So I'm going to show you some ugly details from two failed projects. And hopefully you can learn something from my failures. Let's dive in. 
The first site is one of my own and I've had it since 2018. In the beginning, I was just practicing. I was writing general content and something about Facebook and general life. And it was, it was getting around 79, 65 page views a month. And I was happy with it, but at some point I decided to let the project rest for a while. And all through 2019, I didn't do anything with the site. So in 2020, I finally decided what I wanted to do with the site and I started posting content on there. And it, it started to get some traffic again, 76, 103. Um, there's some weird spikes in here. I don't, I don't know why they're here. It's, it's some weird uh, bot traffic. There's only three days where I get like 600, 800 page views and it, we just have to pretend it's not there. And right around here, the, all the content on the site is at least a year old. So we know from experience that uh, eight, maybe 10, 10, 12 months is sufficient for an article to, to start to, to rank and to pick up some, some traffic. And at this point, all the articles are at least one year old and some of them almost two years old. And for this type of content and the amount of content that is on there, uh, at least a thousand page views, maybe two, three or five thousand page views wouldn't be uh, too much to expect. And as you can see, there's nothing uh, even close to that 80 and in last month it's 103. The other site is a domain I purchased in 2019 and it also has some, some weird bot traffic here. So I'm going to zoom in on this part before the bot traffic. So because there is actually traffic here, we, we just can't see it. So I'm just going to shorten it to the end of May here last year. So, um, and you can see there is some traffic up to 385, but it's, it's, it's weird that it, it doesn't have a, a slow, uh, steady incline. All through 2019 and in the beginning of 2020, I posted 82 articles on this site. And I've done the same keyword research as I do for my other sites. And it's the same, same type of quality of, of content and I usually get around 500 page views in, on average. So that will be quite a lot more traffic that I'm seeing here. We can also take a look at the, the website after the bot traffic in June and see how it's done for the last couple of months. It, it looks more steady and, and maybe there's an incline starting here, but it's nowhere near uh, the level of traffic that I would expect with 82 articles. Both of these sites has some, uh, had some authority before I started to post regularly on them. For the first site, I started posting mostly about Facebook and then I didn't post on it and then I started posting regularly on a completely different topic. The other site uh, where I purchased the domain, when I went back and looked at what has been posted to that domain before, it was mostly thin content and it was all over the place and I couldn't really find a, a common thread in it. So I, I posted some content that was sort of similar and then started to go in my own direction. For both of these sites, I was posting something else than that originally had been on the domains. And I was trying to shift the authority in a different direction. And as you can see, I haven't been able to do that. My advice is that you get the content that has been on the site before, so you at least keep the authority in that area on the site. And if you can't get that, you at least assess what type of content, what the, the area of authority is. So if you do what I've done here and starting posting in, in a different pillar, you will have to build up new authority in that space. And you can just as well have been starting with a completely new domain that also doesn't have any authority in that pillar. So you have to be 
in, in my experience, you have to be very precise to stay in the authority. As I said in the beginning, I've started a completely new domain for this project. And I've posted the staggering amount of content, two articles on there, and they're both indexed. So something is going on here. I've, I've done something right. And if you look at my playlist on how I'm cracking the Google indexing issues, you would know that I haven't really found out what I'm doing right with this uh, site yet. But the articles are indexed and I have 45 page views on the site. So that's all well and good. So something else is going on here. And Karl Roof also talks about this, that he doesn't believe there is a sandbox period. And the, the argument is that it is more to do with the authority the site has in a certain area. So even though it might have a big or high authority in one area, if you start writing content in a completely different area, you will basically start at zero as well. So this is sort of the same when you start a new site. It has zero authority in all areas. And if this is right, you would have the same success even if you have an H domain or if you have a completely new domain. If you write in an area that the H domain hasn't previously been authority in. So be careful when you choose an, an H domain over a completely new one. Going forward, I'm going to post more articles in the Project Icarus uh, website here and 45 page views isn't a lot and two articles is definitely not enough. But I have a list with 60 articles in them and I want to, to do more scientific studies. And this is sort of what I want to do here on the channel is to be more scientific in my approach to blogging. So I want to post 60 articles all at the same time, but with different methods. So I can compare each of the methods. So to keep things fair, I want to get them all live at the same time. So they all have the same time to rank. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, see ya. There is going to be some more interesting data coming up as soon as the traffic starts to pick up on this website. For the next segment, I am talking about this case study I was designing back in March and that is actually uh, getting some uh, results in now. They need to collect a little more data before I can show them to you, but if you interested in that sort of stuff you should subscribe to the channel of course for the next segment i'm talking about the 60 articles i'm going to publish on this website in reality if you're starting a website you will publish the articles as soon as you have written them letting them drip uh, one at a time as you finish them but for this case study i wanted to publish all articles all at the same time and hopefully get them to index all at the same time. I will be returning to that point in a little bit. But for the next segment, I am talking about the 60 articles and how I design this study going forward. And I'm happy to report that nothing has happened. Boring! But in all seriousness, I have some plans coming up that I think might interest you. Here in March, I've been using my energy doing keyword research. I'm going to tell you about that in a bit. So I haven't been publishing any articles. So we are still at two and the page views are a bit down. I don't worry too much about that with two articles. And there's no ads or affiliate links on the site yet. So the revenue is still zero. Jasper, who you might know from YouTube here as well, he has started a case study website where he wanted to front load a lot of content, but because of indexing issues, that didn't really happen. So I was fascinated by the, the fact that he was doing that case study and I wanted to, to do something similar. And for that, I've taken six different keyword research methods and I've found 10 keywords with each of them that gives 60 articles. And I want to put all 60 articles on the website all at once. 
hopefully getting them indexed. And then I can sort of more scientifically compare the research methods uh, and see which one is better to start a new website on. The six methods are KDR, Alphabet Soup, the sleeper keyword method I've talked about here on the channel, and then keywords from a tool called Low Fruit, and the last one from Keyword Chef. So the two tools uh, on the last there is uh, giving you a score whether to choose a keyword or not. And I've just chosen the, 10 top, the top 10 results in those tools. And uh, I, I want to be scientific about this. So um, in science, you cannot pick and choose your sets of data. And there is keywords in there, especially the KDR method gives me a couple of keywords where I can look at the first page on Google and I see some pretty authoritative sites on page one, but they have a low KDR. And for this research, I have to pick them because they came out on top. So I'm taking those 10 keywords and I'm putting them in, getting some uh, articles written and I'm putting them on the site. And then maybe in half, uh, half a year, eight months, I can report back and, and tell you whether that was a good idea or not. My gut feeling tells me no, but in, to be fair to the science here, I cannot uh, go and pick and choose the keywords. And that wouldn't be a good result to show you here on the channel. On top of that, I'm mixing up the sources I'm getting the articles from. So I've chosen four different content writing services and I'm ordering uh, articles from the six different buckets from these four article writing services. So maybe I can report back on uh, how they are doing uh, as well. That is a bit less scientific, -y, but, but um, there will be some interesting results for that coming up as well. If you want to learn more about how I get my articles indexed now, you can subscribe to the channel. Of course, there's more content coming out on that. Or you can just go back and look at the video I just uh, published because I've done some scientific research on these indexing issues. I wouldn't say I have found uh, the reason why the indexing issues is happening and I couldn't say I've solved it, but I've found a solution for it. And now I'm actually getting 100% of my articles indexed and you can stay tuned for this case study because I'm putting an, another video out in the beginning of May and then I can tell you whether these 60 articles are getting indexed or not. So, so for the next segment, I'm talking about a failure I made in April, last of April, start May. I installed spam on my websites. I was sort of blind to my own boredom and I wanted something to happen and boy, did I make something happen. So it postponed some of this uh, case study. So I'm behind a, a month or so. It actually also cut a, quite a decent uh, amount of traffic from a lot of my websites. And here a couple of months later, I'm still only at two thirds of uh, my past income. The May core update has also been hitting some of my sites. But for the next segment here, I am going to lay out my failure in all transparency for you, maybe for you to learn something. We need to talk. I've been hit with spam and there's actually two things in that that I think that you could actually learn something from. So it's not just me sitting here crying over all the time I wasted because I actually brought this on myself. Um, and then we need to talk about quality of articles in regards to indexing. No matter what you say, you cannot make me believe that content quality is what gets an article indexed. I know there is some talk about Google wants uh, high quality uh, content and is only indexing the high quality stuff. But uh, in this uh, spam mess I've been through for the last 14 days, I've had almost 3 million, and that's M-I-O in Danish, that's million articles indexed with just rubbish content. And they were all indexed within two or three days after getting the spam onto, onto my websites. 
And you can see that in traffic uh, as well, because the spam changed the titles of some of my articles. And when I look at the content on the articles that the spam had put on my sites, it's it's very thin. There's uh, no more than 150 words on them. There was a slider and, and uh, images of shoes and watches and, and everything else. And of course, we wouldn't use the same technique to get our content indexed. Um, not that I know how they did it. <sighs> so the reason why the spam came into my site was because I put it there myself. So, and that's the other thing that you can maybe take from, from my experience here is that I'm over a decade into blocking and I still do these uh, types of mistakes. So back in January, the site I've been working on was starting to, to take up some traffic. I've tried to revive an old site and I've put a decent amount of energy into reviving that site for uh, November and December and and nothing happened and still here in April still nothing has happened so the site isn't dead still because it it's still getting some decent traffic even though I've written a, a ton of new content and it, it's still not moving so in January, January, I was a bit um, deflated and I was uh, looking uh, for a shiny object to, to put my energy into. So I found myself uh, digging through um, Flipper to find a site that I could maybe buy. So maybe I could buy my way into the success. <sighs> that sounds stupid now, right? And of course, I, you cannot do that. And I know there is a lot of spam on Flipper as well, but this one seemed to be it seemed to to check out. It, it wasn't uh, high quality content, but it it was um, it was cheap. That might have been a, a red flag. <laughs> You have to be really lucky anyway if you want to find a, a good site that is also cheap. So usually they are not. The site was a, a content site and um, I was very interested in the domain name. That was the, the main draw of, of that. I put a bit in and I forgot everything about it. I got back to work and I was picking up some, some steam on other, uh, on other sites in February and then uh, completely forgot about it. And then he got back to me uh, in March and I've actually put a bit in that was now the highest bit and he wanted to sell me the, the site for a, a, a cheap price. So I said, yeah, well, okay. And when I got the site, everything uh, was uh, spam content, but I didn't know that until I get, got the site and put it on my, my Bluehost account. So, okay. Uh, I could maybe delete some of the spam content and then that was all well and good. And, and it had uh, some traffic going to it. So I could build on, on that. And, and it is going to be a test site where I put random stuff on it. It's, it's a sort of a catch all content site where I put random ideas onto. So that didn't, didn't matter too much. It was live for about 14 days and then suddenly all of my nine sites on Bluehost had spam on them. So of course, the, the package I got contained uh, spam and that had got access to the server and had now spread its uh, infection on all of my nine sites. And of course I had WordFence uh, installed and I was deleting everything and I thought, everything was well and good until I looked the next day and then all the spam was back. So, okay, I deleted it once more. <laughs> and then the traffic for 3 million articles was starting to get four, 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 four <laughs> errors on my site. So I've uh, been working on putting up redirects 25 at a time. So that's, that is maybe going to take a while to get to 3 million in, in that way. I have to figure out how to, to do that. And now I spent a full working day on deleting all the spam content once more. 
and I had the awesome support at Bluehost to help me find almost 10,000 spam files on, on the server, on the, the different websites. So hopefully when I get to check in a second, it's still gone, hopefully, so I can get back to working. <clears throat> and the learning I'm heading for here is the shiny object syndrome that you, I know for sure that you have heard of in other videos about blogging. And blogging has um, some low points and uh, periods where you don't uh, see anything move, even though you, you do quite a lot of work. One of the exciting things about blogging is that it was supposed to be passive income. And it's definitely not passive in the sense that we have to write new content all the time. And when we do that and use our energy on that, we of course want um, to see results. And when we don't see them, it's, it's very difficult. You are a different person than me and you might be made of a different fabric than I am. I still find it difficult, even though I'm 12, 14 years into blogging now, to trust that <laughs> that the success will come even though I just have to type one more article and, and it gets uh, boring and I want to uh, jump into the next more exciting thing. That is a failure I've uh, made just just now and hopefully you can learn something uh, from that. This was going to be an income report and, and a status update for my Icarus project, but instead of publishing the, the articles I've talked about before, I've used my time uh, cleaning out the spam, of course. So May is going to be the month, I hope. So I will be publishing all the content in May and you can follow the channel here to see if I can get my 60 articles, only 60 articles indexed. Not in the same way that the spammers do, but hopefully I have a, a, a way to get the 60 articles indexed. And if you're curious, you should check my video on that. See you next time. Getting articles to index has been an issue for quite some time now. And for the case study here on the, the channel, I needed the articles to sort of index um, mostly at the same time. There is a lot of talk about you can just do manual index and you can do the, the Google API and there's some issues uh, around that. And I have another video here on the channel where I show you that just doing uh, manual indexing um, is not what is actually going to make articles index. You might be lucky that they are actually indexing in the time where you're doing the manual index, but it's not what actually makes them index but that's a topic for the other video and you can go and watch that if you like for the next segment i am showing you how i make the articles in this case study index sort of on the same time and in the same time and there is a, a, a trick to it and and some uh, details i will share with you here okay time to talk about metrics analytics search console and money and for those of you who like to read, I've typed everything up in a nice article link in the description. So finally, I have some interesting data to share with you. And this is month uh, five gone. And this is usually where you can expect to see the first movement on a new site. In the past month, I've added 60 articles to the website and I managed to get them all indexed, even though this site seems to be one of those who didn't really want to. <laughs> and I'll tell you in a second how I did that. So if you're a beginner and you just started a blog, this is usually a very tough period because you can see some movement, but you have been working on your site for almost half a year without any real feedback from users or from Google if what you're doing is any good. So I've done this before and I'm pretty confident that this looks good and adding in now 62 articles 
or 63 because I'm recording this after the June 1st where I added one more article. So there's 63 articles indexed on the site now. And I'm confident that the, most of them will rank and draw in some traffic. But if you have been typing away for the last half year writing 63 articles without any field feedback, this can feel very tiring. And I really feel that the metrics for this website is um, fairly usual, actually. Uh, at this time, there's some movement, but not too much. So if we look at analytics first, there's a big uptick in the start. That's probably just me visiting the site while I was doing some updating and <laughs> removing a lot of spam. Some of the visits can maybe be bots in correlation with the spam, I don't know. Here at the end of the month, it's, it looks more normal. It seems to be one visitor a day, and this is actually where the, the blue line lets go of the baseline, and, and there is actually uh, more than zero visitors to the website every day. And this, is, um, this looks good. So if we take the monthly view, this is uh, actually a pretty nice graph for a young website. In Search Console, we can see that the website is getting some exposure, not uh, too much and, and not too many clicks, but the, the exposure is, is looking like it's, it's going to take off now. And if we look at the coverage tab, we can see there's a, a lot of pages indexed here. This is uh, the spam uh, that had gotten indexed. This is all removed now, but they still show up as indexed here in the Google, Google Search Console. And you can actually find the URLs in the search results still. They all redirect now to just to the front page. And this is visible in the excluded tab where you can see this is actually uh, increasing the 404 errors. And that's uh, in this case a good sign. And if we scroll down and see the URLs that are actually in the sitemap, we can, we can see that it says 64. That is probably just the front page. And then the 63 articles I have on there now. And the scary hole here in the middle is where I was working uh, on removing the spam. And it looks like all the articles uh, were indexed on the same day. Um, they weren't. Um, I was looking every day basically after publishing the, the articles and I was working to get them indexed. And within a week, maybe two weeks, everything was indexed. So I think the reason why the graph looks like this is because Search Console have maybe just updated the sitemap on that date, finding that the URLs that were indexed then also were in the sitemap. But well, it doesn't really matter. The URLs are in the index now and that is what counts. If you have a site that get scrolled on a regular basis and your URLs typically get indexed within a couple of days. And if you put them into the manual indexing system and you can get uh, an article indexed in that way, you're uh, lucky and I applaud you and I'm happy for you. I have sites that does this as well, but this site seem to be not in that category and just putting the articles on the site and putting them through the manual indexing tool wasn't getting them indexed. So I have to do, I had to do something different for this site. And as I've shown you here on the channel before, I have a scientific proof that this method will get a non-indexing site indexed. Uh, and you can go on and watch that video afterwards if you want to, to know um, the more scientific reasoning and proof behind this method. So what I did was I created a sort of like a, an, an hand created sitemap. What that is, is just a page I create in WordPress. And there's nothing else on that page beside the exact keywords I want the article to rank for. So I'd put in the specific keyword and then I make that keyword a link to that article. 
And I did that for the whole 60 articles. And after that, I forced index this handcrafted sitemap. What this does is that it creates at least one internal link to all the articles. And it forces Google to at least be aware of these links. That managed to get about a third of the articles indexed. And after that, I was putting them into the rest of them into the manual indexing tool. And that managed to get maybe one fourth, uh, not a complete third of the articles indexed. And then I was left with little more than a third of the uh, articles and URLs that wasn't getting picked up by the index. And I used this force indexing method. I use a tool called Index Me Now, and I have an affiliate link in the description below. That means if you click the link and decide to sign up and pay for the service, I get paid a small commission without any extra cost to you. This has done wonders for this site. Because as I said, I have sites that get picked up by the bots as they should, but this site, at least here in the beginning, is not one of those. So I have to do something different. And both, of course, for the purpose of this case study, I want the, the, the URLs to, to be indexed sort of almost at the same time. You can go back and, and look at the last month's video or the one before to for an explanation why that is important to me this time. But also for uh, the future of this site, the testing I've done is on an other niche site I have, and it was just sitting there without getting indexed for 12, 13 months before I found this indexing tool and, and put the, the articles through there. And now that site is 100% indexed as this site is, but it took a, a complete year working on that site and I actually thought I was going to give up on that because nothing happened. I'm not a, a big a fan of using the Rank Math API because Google has stated that they don't like that. And we know <laughs> from experience when Google say they don't like something, even though it's completely apparent that it works, when Google says they, they don't like that, they will at some point take that advantage away from you and your site will drop back to where it, it was actually supposed to be and, and that boost is completely gone. The future of this case study is that in this month, I'm not going to publish too much more content, but I will be working on monetization. And hopefully in the next case study video, I will be able to share with you that this site has earned its, its first dollar. So stay tuned for uh, how I put ads on this site. I will be using the Ezoic Access Now program. I am uh, in Ezoic with all my other sites, but I haven't signed up with a fresh domain and a fresh website through this Access Now program. And I'll be doing that for the first time, documenting the, the process so you can see what that is like. I will also be signing up for affiliate programs. I'm less familiar with that. So that is also going to be a learning for me and I will report the complete process. Hopefully when I get back in a month, I can tell you that we have earned the first money within half a year of starting a new website. Till next time, take care. I know some people here on YouTube are promising way faster results than I have on this case study, but I do feel that this case study is fairly average and very doable for an income, especially if you are a beginner. So uh, I'm, I'm not a beginner, but I still make mistakes as you've seen with with the, the failures and the spam. So that is holding the, the site and this case study a bit back. But here in month six for the next segment, I am actually going to earn a little bit of money and some of the first tra traffic is going to show up. And this is a very exciting time for a website, especially 
if you don't have too much experience with with the blocking world because it's it's sort of now you can get a feel for if your keyword research was good enough if your niche, niche selection was interesting enough for you to write articles about and if the site will even index or if the articles will rank in in any f- meaningful way of course this is way too early to to make any conclusions but if a site starts to pick up now as this case study is then then you can get a, a sense for if you're headed in the right direction so for the last segment here month uh, month six uh, i'm showing you some data and talking about some plans for the next half year time for a case study update video and we are going to talk about some analytics and of course search console and then money of course and there is something to talk about and then today i'm going to do something new i'm going to do what is called a swot analysis it is going to be fairly basic but i will get into details on that in just a second firstly the stats for the website so there's 64 articles on there now if you want to know why i waited to may to post all articles all at the same time, you can go back and watch the earlier status updates. But in short, I'm working on making some data on uh, what keyword research methods are uh, the best for a young site like this. And I wanted to post all the articles at the same time to give them the same time to rank. And there is some movement now and it's looking interesting. I just added two articles here in June, so not much, but all in all, 64 articles on the site and 100% of them are indexed. Also, if you want to know how I did that, I talk about this in my status updates and I'm going to talk more about that going forward, but I have a whole video where I show you exactly how I get all this uh, articles indexed. People are talking about you should just put them into the manual index and maybe do some interlinking and that will get your site indexed faster. And I have some scientific data that shows that that is not the case actually. It might be a prerequisite for getting a site indexed, but it's it's not Uh, what actually makes a site index so I talk about that in earlier videos and you can go and watch those if you if you want to know more about that and for page views we have 280 and that is uh, actually fairly decent and if you want a graph you can look at this sorry I might have uh, overdone the animation a bit there you can see in April that the, there's there's an, a spike up and it looks like it's down in May. I actually believe that is because I was doing a lot of updating in April, making all the 60 articles ready to get getting published in May. I think that is actually a false spike. I think the trend line looks more like this. So So the traffic numbers looks nice, I think, for this young website. Even though 280 page views is not much, but it's still not nothing. And if we look at... Sorry about that. And if we look at some earnings, we have a whopping 30 cents. Uh, What happened here is that I actually applied for ISOG in the beginning of the month, but I wasn't approved. The reason was that in order to make the site as fast as humanly possible, I stripped everything off, all the menus and all the footer and all the sidebar, and AdSense ended up rejecting me because of lack of navigation. So why AdSense have a say in what my website should look like, I don't really understand, but... um, of course, if I wanted to get approved for their platform, I have to, of course, meet some requirements. And to get approved for uh, ISOIC, you need to go also through the AdSense sign-up process. And it took a while. I had to actually reapply twice. I added a uh, bag in uh, the sidebar and uh, the header and made a category menu on in the footer. I don't really like those, but apparently... AdSense liked them and then suddenly everything was fine but then some time had had passed so I didn't get 
ads actually running on the site to to the last week of the month there hasn't been too many visits with actually ads showing so that is why the the earnings is still low i was um, going to put affiliate links on the site if you remember from last month's video but the sign-up process for that also took a while and I was just approved uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, that was just before the end of the month. So that didn't leave me enough time to add some uh, actually affiliate links. So affiliate income is still zero. But now the, the site is actually earning money. And I think 30 cents, that isn't very impressive, but it's still not zero. And this is, uh, I believe, somewhat normal and what you can expect from an, a young site half a year in. I know you can find videos here on YouTube where people are earning uh, quite a lot more after six months. If you look up LJ from Blocksprout, she can show that she earns almost $700 at this point. And that is very impressive. And I'm very inspired by that story. This is, I feel, maybe on the lower end of what you can expect uh, for a site at this age. So adding that into the table and then the EPMV, the earnings per thousand visitors, is uh, calculated for eleven dollars. And if, of course, it only calculates what is earned during the time where the ads were actually showing. So next month is going to be very interesting and is going to be more precise on what we can expect the EPMV for this site to be. Eleven dollars isn't impressive, but it's um, it's it's fair in here in the beginning. So if we want to look at mm, Oh, I have to take these animations out. I'm so, I'm so sorry. So if we look at Search Console, you can see the purple line for uh, the impressions. I'm oh, sorry, this is in Danish, but the purple line is still purple. And that is for impressions. And it's, it's taking off nicely. It's still under a hundred a day, but it's still uh, let, it's still letting go of the baseline, and of course, getting you all your articles indexed is of course a good thing for this trend line to be heading upwards like it, it has here. For the SWOT analysis for this website, we're first going to look at some strength, and I believe that the keyword research for this website is fairly diverse meaning that at least some of the articles will rank and will show me what categories are the easiest to get some traffic in. I have been using what I call the sleeper keyword research method, where I find some fairly low competition keywords to start off with. They can be pretty random in uh, what I select, but they are uh, very likely to get some uh, early traffic in and I'm very excited to, to see how that is going. So that is definitely a, a strength. Also that all the articles on this site are indexed now. And that is uh, also a good sign. Even though I have to use this special method to, to get them indexed, the articles are 100% indexed now. And then a uh, last strength is that I am a veterinarian and I am writing about pets and a certain chronic illness that these pets can have. So I'm able to fact check a lot of the, the content and it's not just, it's also, but not just something I've just found on the internet. And I can check if the writers have done a, a, a decent job. And there is actually some misconceptions out there where if you Google something, you will find something that is opposite of what is actually actually true. And even though you go down in the search result, the same uh, wrong thing is reiterated over and over. And looking for an answer without knowing that this is the false answer will actually just reproduce the same fault in the new articles. So it's a strength for me and for the website that I'm able to fact check that. For some weaknesses, we I'm looking at what can be improved. Looking at my notes here, some of these articles still need some editing. Reading more thoroughly through the articles is necessary to weed out more of the wrong things that some of the outsourced content has. Only 
a handful of the articles have images and I actually have access to photos of a lot of these diseases and I have a photo bank already with a lot of these photos in them. So just picking them out and putting them on the website is a good thing to do. But it is a weakness at this point that the articles doesn't have any photos on there. And this is a, a fairly visual topic as well. And then a, a, another weakness I have is I don't have a set process for getting new content onto the site. I have, of course, a thousand other projects, uh, as many of us do, and way too many for me to handle. And this project is, of course, one of them. And what I need is a more structured process for the keyword research method and getting content on the site consistently. So that is uh, an improvement point as well. And then for some opportunities for the website, just adding some affiliate links will be a very low hanging fruit. And of course, I'm going to do that. Um, opportunities for going a little uh, more forward is that this website is about a chronic illness. So there will always be someone searching for issues around this disease. And even though that you have a good handle on what is going on with your pet, you will most likely have to go back and search for new areas when the, the pet has a, a downturn. And then in the same vein, there is a huge potential for doing ebooks and courses and tutorials and creating my own digital product because people will need a structured guide and they will need some reference material they can go back and look at every time the pet has a flare up on, of this disease. Some threats to the websites are obviously the Google updates. So this is a fairly new site. So the May core update didn't affect this site at this point, or at least I'm not able to see that in the numbers, but Google updates are a threat to us all, I think. And this is a topic where maybe I could look more at getting some Bing traffic traffic I don't believe that my audience for this website is on .go, but may, maybe there's something to, to look into there. But maybe getting some more uh, search traffic from other search engines, engines could be a, a good thing. Also, email will be a, a good traffic source for this type of website. Eat could be also an issue. I am a veterinarian and I am able to show that on the website. But if I'm able to show it in a way that Google actually wants is still a, a question. So that is somewhat out of my hands. And then, of course, this site can be taken over by any of the larger um, publishing sites that have to do with pets. Pet Healthline could just as easily post 50 monster articles covering every single topic there is to cover on this disease and then my site wouldn't rank anywhere, not for years anyway. So, and that is also out of my control and maybe building an email list will be a way to, to hedge against that. And then the goals for next month is set pretty low because this is one of the good things of running an online business that uh, even though this is definitely not passive, I can let go of working hard on a site during the summer months. The kids are home from school and we are going on a camping trip to France. So in that time, we are going to make uh, funny videos for YouTube and, and having a good time. And even though I will be creating content and I want to create some YouTube videos with my kids for another channel, I'm not going to create too much content for this site. So I have the flexibility, I have the possibility to, to let go of this site for a month. So I'm just going to do what I didn't manage to do uh, this month. I'm going to add the uh, Amazon links in and I'm going to show, create a one short video with a service called Lumen5. And that is for the video ads on Isoic. And it's going to be interesting to see what that does for the EPMV. And then I will be adding some photos for the site. Fairly basic stuff. And 
I'm not going to post any new articles this month. So I'm uh, taking my foot off the gas for this site for the next month, but I'm still very excited to see what the EPMV does when uh, the site have had a complete month with ads on it. And I'm I'm very excited to see what the Amazon links can do as well. So that is going to be in the next update video. And if you want to know how I get my articles indexed, you should look at that video. And this video is showing you how, how I do the sleeper keyword research method also done for this site. Till next time, take care. So that was the first six months of this website. I am going to continue this case study. And if you want to follow along, of course, you can subscribe to the channel. I am talking about more science-based uh, approach to blogging. So instead of just feeling something or having an opinion, I try to collect some decent data. I am going to show you a, more, a bit more nerdy spreadsheet approach to, to blogging. And if you're into that sort of stuff, this is the channel for you. I'm going to publish soon the next month's uh, income report. And the site is actually earning money, not a lot, but the, the site is uh, picking up traffic and is getting a couple of cents in. So that is very exciting. I hope to see you back here on the channel. Till next time, take care.